did that thing again where I walked off. I'm just looking at what you're looking at and it looks like the quilt is crooked. But it's... Maybe it's just... I don't know. Let's pull it this way. I'll just, I'll just stand here for a minute and recover a bit. Um, 45 minutes ago, a truck arrived. And I was totally on top of it, and I was totally fine. I was going to leave it, and we would worry about it later. And I thought, I'll just, you know, I'll just... My paperwork was a little bit contradictory on what was in there. And anyone that's got fabric coming in at the moment, or anything on a boat gets really nervous, they've got stuff on that boat that's stranded out the coast of Sydney. We do not. But, you know, you thought, I'll just check. It's not... I don't even understand. It's, I thought we'd get Melbourne in the first one and Under the Australian Sun that's coming in two weeks in the second. But I've got a menagerie. It's a blended, it's a blended delivery. So I can only think everything that was being bolted or that I was getting rolls of has been thrown. They've literally just stopped. They've gone, nope, stop here get this down the dock because the boats are due to leave and then there's another one coming in two weeks so I'm <laughs> I'm so confused but in a good way for us because it means some of the things that were due to come back into stock or new colors are actually here now and I didn't think they were going to be here for a little bit longer so that's all very exciting because you can have some and I can get my sample cards done for the textile pantry and we can make new things earlier than I thought. So it's all it's all super cool. So thank you very much for your patience. Um, em and I probably could have pushed the button to go live at two, but we had not eaten lunch. And I'm still, the girls are, Quarters Life girls, uh, I did film the Skinny Lantern and um, I will, <laughs> I'm rubbing my tush, because I fell. They will see me very freshly from falling over while helping the truck diver unload the truck so um, I'm probably not gonna I'll be standing to quilt <laughs> this afternoon Cindy is here so is Lynn Stevens so is Sumagonchi so is Jewishism hello actually on time for once you're funny you were up at 6.30 this morning, Jill Chisholm. I know that. Good afternoon, Julie Ridge, and welcome to Chandler's Cottage, if I have not seen you on live before. Hello, Diane. What a glorious day it is out there. It is, and there are messages coming in from Natasha at the moment that says, I've never been so relieved to get a box. And the reason, the reason is that she had a box doing the rounds of Birmingham. <laughs> with my Japanese Baltimore and Matilda's medallion in it for a cup for a two, three, four days. Uh, and it was part of a, a delivery of two boxes and she only got one a week ago. So she's very, very happy. And so are we all. Love it when a quilt rocks up. Um, Diane, it is a glorious day out there. It is. Yvonne, good afternoon to you. Nancy Cook. It is a stunning quilt. There is a story behind the quilt. The quilt's actually been here for a long time. I will go through the quilt. Hello, Karen. Carter, how are you today? Thank you for all of the kisses. Violet, hello to you in New York. Lovely to see you. Um, Nancy, please. Ricky's here. Francis is here. Francis and all of my girls. So a lot of you are... Lisa, get on with it, get on with it. Do our kits for the geisha, uh, for Madam Butterfly, because I've started the course and everything. I am working on them. So when I, so I've still got, how do I explain it? I can't just once cut one kit and do that person on the top of the pile and then do the next one. I need to do them all in one go. So I still have 30 kits to make and that's all I can make based on the fabric I've got left. But if you would like to go 30 times 25 and do the math on how many bits of fabric I've got to cut, then you will understand why I'm doing all of the kits in bulk and then I go to the pile of people waiting for a kit that have an order in or on a waiting list and they will go out this week. I'm on my own this week um, too with cutting Steve's off on a uni first A course. Jill Cross, good afternoon to you. Still haven't sent your parcel. Marie Carroll, good afternoon to you. Hello, Joe. Hello, Denise. Um, hello, Doreen. Jane's here as well from Newmerka. Am I right? I am, aren't I? I think you are in your Merca. 
up there with Sylvia. Hello, Deb. Janet is here as well. Cindy's here. Um, is it Katish? I think it's Katish. Katish, welcome to you. Mark Evans is here. Cindy's in Yeovil and she's got three grandkids today, school holidays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sylvia Davidson's here. Jenny, Chris Otto, beautiful day in Hillsville. How is it with you? Hang on, I'll check. Okay. It is sunny, sunny, and Ginny's at the window on truck patrol. I went out before, and she was on top of the truck shed, sort of just, you know, doing the sphinxing, surveying her, her subjects. And then yesterday I found her asleep in the chicken coop. We won't go there. Um, but it's lovely. Uh, who else is here? Rosemary Brooks is here. I've just chased my dog around the dog coat. <laughs> your dog got out. Janine, hi. Sorry, I missed your call this morning. Hello, Floria. All packed up, safely packed away, if you know what I'm talking about. Maggie, hello. Lovely to see you. Helen Cassidy's here. Megan Lancaster's in the building. She can hear me in the other room. Uh, and we'll be in in a minute. Hi, Christine. Right, okay. Joy, hi. Elaine, hi. Leslie, I've got your email. I do have it. I understand it, but I read it too early this morning, so I have printed that and I will get back to you. It's a bit cold where Sylvia is. Francis, okay. Yes, I know Francis. It's a stunning kit though, mate. Really, it really is. Uh, you'll see a little bit more of it when I upload your narrow lantern to a quilter's life this afternoon. Sylvia Trencher, hello to you. Jenny Sleeman, just talking about you. Jenny Sleeman, no, I'm still, I'm still doing something for you. Oh, I've got so much out there to do. Rob's coming home early today. Hello, Barb. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll do more. Unfortunately, as you know, timing-wise, we started Madam Butterfly, didn't think about Did we all think about it? None of you told me off for planning to launch something the day after the end of the financial year. So... Uh, I'm getting there. I am getting there, I promise. it's There's no stopping. We just keep going. So we've got all of the sale orders being done. Uh, Steve thought he had done them all except for 10. He'd missed a page. A page. So I'm nearly through all of those uh, with everything else, and we're good. Now, today, I don't know if you can hear or not, Em's, Ginny, shh, Em's in the other room, and she's madly, madly sewing because... In my wisdom, I decided I did not want to make one, but four twisted knitting bags, the Melba twisted knitting bag version. So, the first one is this one. That's going to be the, <laughs> the second one. So, this is the first one in our new black and pink Melba border stripe, which arrived on the truck. Yes. So, um... Two things for you. This is now up on the website without a photo because I loaded it 10 minutes ago. So I haven't even found the art file photo or taken a photo to put it up. So you will see it there and it will say there is no image because it's just arrived. So this is the new baby. It goes with all of the fabrics that are in the Nouveau colorway. So you can grab your pink fans, your teal fans, your silver fans. You can grab the Nouveau coloured small florals. I'll show you a couple of them now. So it's all ready to go. So I've uploaded a couple of bolts. If it says run out, just bear with me. There is a system that we're supposed to follow for uploading and keeping track of stock. So I have popped up a bolt. But if you go, why does it say nothing? Just give me a few minutes and I will transfer another one in. So this is the new baby. I haven't, I haven't pulled them all of the guys in literally just unwrapped it. Um, the one that we have made a sample up of is has come from uh, my production sample. So you can see the pink goes, the teal goes. It's got a bit of pop, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know what's really interesting too, Em, is that this is real. The, the off-white creams come up really fresh. Yes, crisp. Very Shine. crisp. We won't put any <coughs> stupid accents on today. We'll, no. we'll be good until we've had coffee. So, uh, that's up now. And again, it's got no picture. It says, as seen on Facebook. So, this one is up. And then we have made, as I mentioned to you, that we were going to... Oh, lordy lord, I'll have to read all of your stuff. Um, we have made... I don't know if there's even a close-up. I can 
Maybe let's go this way. Oh, it's going to give away what's underneath though. So we have made the Melba Twisted Knitting Bag with it. Again, it is up with a description. It says black and pink, um, black, pink, silver, and it will say, it's got no photo because it's brand new. I will get the pretty photo done this afternoon, but I have popped up kits for it. The kits are limited for this one at the moment in this particular combo, because remember I showed you this gorgeous sagey silver thing that I had stashed. So I think we've got about 10 kits with this beautiful soft green. And I'll switch it over to another one after that. But the first 10 through will have that one. Um, we've got the multi-floral in the lining. This has also just come back in today. So I've got more stock of that here. I think we had about three, four metres left on the website and then it was gone. The one thing, sorry, the one thing I wanted to mention about the fabric, um, I died <laughs> I died 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 when I saw the shipping cost now we you hear everyone talking about shipping and freight being really expensive I think mine from Japan the shipping element of it has doubled so my import duty is the same my custom break off fee is the same my GST is the same but the shipping has doubled so what I thought well what am I going to do so because we have my fabrics here at $26 a metre, but the new stock coming in, it needs to be 27 So I thought, what am I going to do? So I have put them up at 26 for now, and I'm going to leave them up at that um, until probably for a week, until we do the next show. And then I need to put them up because, as you know, we're launching them into wholesale into the textile pantry, and I have to have them at a price, and sounds silly, where I'm not undercutting my customers because they're their price to their shop is going to be more so I can get away with that for you for a week but then they will have to go to $27. Today's show I didn't even look to see if the banner's gone up for today but everything um, is under show 55. I'm not sure if all the stuff from the show from Saturday is still under that banner or not. Steve did in a real rush while doing sales stuff but show 55 you will find these guys and I'll tidy it up after the show. As I said I sacrificed half an hour going through boxes to find things to put them back in stock rather than being sensible with the website anyway so it looks good doesn't it? i'm really i'm i'm happy with that and it's really fresh em and i have decided um today we're going to do a new quilt with it as well good afternoon melanie yeah emma is a speed sewer janine thanks meg you're welcome joe joan go okay good 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 okay um Sorry, I have completely lost the plot. Yes, so we're going to do lots of different ones of these. Uh, oh, yeah, quilt. Emma and I were talking this morning. We could remake Lady Grey. Remember Lady Grey with the grey version of the border stripe, which um, has come back in today too. It's in the, it came on the same truck with a lovely guy. So the grey's back. So we could do Lady Grey with this oh the digital pattern is up for this too so if you just you'll see what else we're doing with it if you just want to grab the pattern today and use what's in your stash you can uh, get the pattern digital download um and all these will stay at 26 for a week i'm not sure what we're doing later in the week because i have to have to really work on club stuff this week um and just get some stuff done so i will let you know when the next show is and we might just pop in later in the week when we can. But you're going to have to forgive me because I've got a lot of stuff to do. A lot of grumpy applique sampler girls, uh, which I'm up to putting the long borders on now for my sashing. This one's back. So this was Lady Grey, and this we've, we're also redoing in this bag because we had it in this before. But we're actually thinking we're going to sort of do a fusion of Matilda's Medallion quilt with the Lady Grey quilt with this border stripe in this colour. So it'll be full on and dramatic, but we'll break down those borders like Lady Grey and do some new little um, pieced, pieced seminal borders and things in between. Because we've got a lot more to play with now than when we did the original Lady Grey because we didn't have the fan, uh, the fan prints when we did the first one round. So that one's back in. It's a shiny bolt. This one is yours on Chandler's Cottage. It's all shiny because it's still got its wrapper on. 
Um, black is back as well. You hear M in there, she's actually working, I think, on the black one, or I might have it here. So the black and the orange is back in, which is in this quilt here on the back. So maybe I'll talk about this quilt now. So this quilt I did with Leanne Church last year. Now when pre-COVID had a shop, had a Benina dealership, uh, and we started doing a lot of digitizing of designs. So I will get back in touch with Leanne, but at the moment my priority actually isn't to do a whole heap of machine embroidery. My priority at the moment is to do a lovely a quilt like this that really allows us to feature the border prints but we won't do the machine embroidery in here so I want to do some embroidery purse from the panels I also want to do um, some English paper piecing um, you know these little guys here could be really gorgeous little fussy cut Dresden plates and flowers and we can do all manner of different things in here so you know if you look forward now that we've got all of these other things together that we can do and we've got Danny at Epiplex doing custom made templates for us all different sorts of things I will do this quilt layout but we will actually do it um, with applique and EPP in these so that's why I wanted to put it up today because it will sort of well I did use the back of it this morning for a quilter's life uh, to put our blocks on to we're working on but it's really good to have it up. So I'll pop it up here and then it will go up in my studio and above my desk and I'll, I shall look at it for a few days and it will hopefully all come together. Um, but it's, I think that would be a really good combo because these blocks, as usual with applique, you know, we can cut them bigger and it's really nice handwork to do. But when that handwork's all finished, it's going to be up really fast. Chop, cut and put together. So... Okay, sorry, this weird thing's coming up on my... Oh, my computer's doing that thing again. Um, so we can have little cute things to play with. Even these round ones, we could do really lovely little ruched flowers and leaves. So we'll, I want one of those, we can do some handwork and then whip it all together. So we'll do the black and orange. I think it really needs that pop, doesn't it? It's going to be dramatic in the black and orange, and we will also do it in the pink on the black as well so that is what I want to do with you today it's a little different to the patchwork pin tuck patchwork bag mainly they are narrower and we twist the pin tucks differently but we'll do the pin tucks together so I'll pop that back up there um, now you will see can you see this pile over here just I'll just quickly show you the I've tagged all of these under show 55 you can put that in the search window because these have arrived back today and this is why I'm so confused because the big rolls have arrived um, of things but not, not on bolts so it's like they literally just went quick the boats are leaving we'd better get it out uh, I can cut for you off this though that's fine such a glamorous profession okay so we've got the red multi back in stock M, do you reckon were there bolts of the multi red out there there must be surely they wouldn't have split ROTs from from um that was a good grunt wasn't it ROTs from bolts what's the number it doesn't matter. I'm just really just making conversation because I'm grunting a lot. And I'm going, <laughs> now this Double is one, one, two, one. Yes, I'm sure I saw a book. Oh, okay. okay. So it's just me here with this and being dramatic. Oh, yeah. No, that's not it. Doesn't matter. Okay. So this is really important. I know there are a lot of people waiting for that. So you've got ivory flowering gum back. Woohoo! I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else now. Now, now, now. This, as Natasha would say. I know she does. I'm taking her off. Now, now, now. Here you go. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Oh, that bruise on my tush is really... Come on. Look. Look, look, look. We have black. I know, I'm being dramatic. But it's new. That's new. It's new, it's new. 
Maybe not. Joan Coker, I don't know. 60 centimetres of the main. Joan's asking me how much. I don't know. 60 centimetres. Oh. It's true. Oh, the border strap. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Joan, you need 60 centimetres of the border strap. When we cut, be very, very careful. When we cut for you a 60 centimetre repeat for the bag, we... Emma, can you hold that side? We cut... Oh. We cut from here to here. So we actually chop. We do that. Don't chop the dinosaur, Daddy. You know that line. We chop through there so that you have this waratah in the middle. And that's why we sell it Flip in the 60 bag around centimeters. So the girls can see that, the fact that we have actually got that waratah centered. How's that? Beautiful. Good? Okay. So we chop it so that you do end up with it in the middle. And we usually chop it one side at a time because when they're both oh, yeah, yeah, slightly we out do. of... We do. We <laughs> chop We chop one side at a time. Which is... Would you like me to take that away? Which is why I actually bring... I did bring in this time, not just to save a bit of dosh and because we can handle or it. ROT. I brought it in ROT, which is rolled on tube, because then I can lay it out and go zzz right across the whole bit. Yeah. And make sure... Look at the black with those two... Exciting. Black is back. Black is back. It's been about what seven, eight years. Was it under no. which one was it? Was it one or two? It was. It was two. It was two. It had the gum nuts. Oh. That looked like ginger oh. You having a moment? I'm there. having a moment. It's there. I can see the gum nuts right there. I know. I know. But now we can do that quilt again. We put the black in because we haven't got any gum nuts. Hello. So we're talking about charming Australia. So, green is back. Again, if it runs out, please do not panic. The whole thing about today's show is don't panic because I haven't got everything up properly yet. Green is back. <laughs> also back. I'm not even going to wrangle. I'm not going to wrangle unless I absolutely have to. So, the other one that is a stock standard for us that we use a lot for backgrounds and everything is Melba in the ivory involved. The exciting thing for me, all of our little applique essential packs and everything now, we can do some gorgeous gold and cream ones for you with our own fabrics in. So, um, yay, yay, yay. <sighs> so happy. Hello, Sue from California. How are you today? Um, what did I miss? Sorry, I don't have the... Yeah, 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 got all of that. Have to go to the doctor soon. We'll be back to watch later. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, so see, this is... Good. Look at it with the... And maybe black... Come here, son. Hey, can I have a bolt of black Melba fans? Just make my day, please. Got nothing to do with anyone else. Just all about me. Yeah. Sorry. Just humour me. Okay, so I'm going to pop these out of the way. Green. Green's back. Red mulch's back. Cream's back. You know how we were talking about doing a pre-cut pack M? Yes. Like a really rich... No. Definite, Definite one. Look at this. Yum, yum, yum malicious. Maybe we should change our patchwork shop logo. It shouldn't be patterns and culturals with, uh, co sorry, patterns and designs with cultural influence. It should just be the bling shop. Just, just the bling shop. <laughs> Pretty happy. Oh, do we not have any ivory fans or, or cream fans anymore? Not at the moment. I've got okay. to reprint. The girls know that we're waiting. That's the next slot. So we do fans next, and the girls know um, they've seen the periwinkle one. Oh, yes. yes. So we're doing periwinkle and gold. So, um, this is the other. You got any grey fans out there? Just, Just when I get to the doorway. <laughs> oh, this is our other new one in Melbourne. Now, this to me was this what I wanted. I wanted grey. Do you. It's 
it's heavy, right? But there is actually There's 200 metres of fabric on the table because of those ROTs. So yeah. that's the Melba fans, and this is the new floral. So I... Can you show it with the old floral? Just sure. so the girls can appreciate that there's that extra bit of shot. You just want me to wrangle another. Yeah. yeah. Wrestle. Yes, you, you asked me if there were bolts of that red and I wasn't wrestling those boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the plastic. Yes, it's so even smells good. I'm sorry. It even smells good. Alright, so you want them to see this. Yes, but you might need the overhead. Yeah, well, there you go. So you can see this is our which has been out of stock forever as well. So our ivory and silver is back, and it's got a little bit of cream in it. Instead of the cream this time, we've got this pure grey. And that is just plain black. Just plain black. Now, my soiree girls have seen that. They have, because it was in your little project. It's in the purse. And the Quilters Life girls are getting first dibs on the leftover kits, because I didn't know there were any. Oh, and did you unpack a mystery box? I found them. Oh, okay. Um, did I have out? Oh, and and yes, I did do that. Yeah, there was a mystery box that was going to storage, ready for oh. the soiree, and I opened it, and there they were. All right, enough mucking around. Let's let's get serious and do some twisted pin tucks. Who says good afternoon? Someone just said good afternoon. Oh no, I pushed the wrong button. View event. Oh no. There we go. There we go. So we go there. Now I've got you all back. Afternoon, Fiona. How are you? Good afternoon, Catherine. Just got home. Lovely. And you've got your geisha kit. Well, let's not mention that because some people don't have theirs yet. So. I was thinking with the Oriental Baltimore, which we're redoing in um, Quilter's Life, what we're doing together, I'm remaking it. I did think about, do I want to stick with the same colours? Would it be really cool to do something, you know, really contemporary and just do it all in greys and silvers and reds on black? I just felt for it. I've already, I've already got one, so I just, you know, I've been thinking about it. Okay. We've got this to make. Now, M's in the other room doing heaps and heaps over there with it. Uh, and I wanted to show you some of the other combinations we're putting together. Now, I've popped three, the three Melba ones I have popped up on the website. The grey one has its photo because we have had that one before. This new one and the black and orange, they don't even have a photo. And I've mentioned that because we're making them now. It's life with you. So I will pop those up. And then I warned you, pre-warned you, I was going to do it with our beautiful I've Got a Notion fabrics that came in from Northcote. And this is where we are at. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So, oh, it's psychedelic. So in it, this. Now, this one is not up yet. Just watch for it to come up this afternoon. Um, when It will come up when we've finished it. I don't know, it should be tonight. I will post it on Facebook when it's up. With the other three kits, there is no panic because as you know, we've got all our fresh stock in. So we're absolutely fine with the other three. With this one, there is a limited number. There'll only be about six or seven. So you'll want to just keep an eye out and I will post it on this Facebook page when it's ready. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. So it's got this in the lining. So we've gone all out and used both the fabrics. So this is the lining, and this is the one you can see we're using on the front, and also for the back pocket. All right, so we're going to work a little bit backwards, if in a way, with these as we go today, because Em's putting them together as we go. Oh, this is, that's the pin tag fabric. <laughs> Good fun. All right, so I'm going to pop this one back up for a tick. The first thing is just to kind of explain how the pin tucks work because they are two-sided. So you can see here, if you look at this one, there are two different sides to it. And that's how you can get a really lovely dramatic effect with it. I'm going to pop these ones a little bit further up. 
Um, we also use the feature fabric for your straps. So nothing, absolutely nothing is wasted. You need 60 centimeters. You are going to use pretty much the whole lot. And I'm going to show you how I cut it as well. So we even use what's left to make the, the straps on it. So it's a really, it's a really neat way to use all of a 60 centimeter cut, whether it's from a fabric like this that's continuous or fussy cut it from Melba. So just because Em's madly sewing in there and we want to make the most of make the most of her time. Hey Em. She can't hear me. What has she given me? Oh, she's given me the whole shebang. Okay. The first thing is, and shall we shall we celebrate the return of a couple of our friends? Just let's just cut a little bit off these. Fresh bolts. Look at that. So said so they even smell good. I just, you know, oh, I can smell Japan. I can smell the Japanese textile fa factory. Yum. Do you judge the quality of clothing by the smell when you walk in a shop like I do? I do. I'm a bit of a textile snob with that. Good night, Diana. Love to you in Costa Rica. Um, when... When I walk into a clothing store, if I can smell Indian, if I can smell really cheap dye, um, you know, a lot of the Indian manufactured clothes, you know, they're fine if they're done well. But if I, did you know Creative Goods Ruler only works and grips if you actually take the plastic cover off it? Um, if I can smell the dye when I walk in the store and it's and it's overwhelming, I walk out again. Because to me, it means it's probably not going to be colour colour fast. You know that when you go on holidays to Bali or somewhere. And it smells and you think I'm going to wear that once. And that's all I'm going to get. <laughs> Alright, so with your pin tucks, one and a half inch wide. So I'm just going to cut that off there. The, the, it's a bit of a game here now because Steve's away this week. Rob and I are such children. It's like, how much can we put away and hide and move and rearrange before he gets back? A lot. A lot. We move as much as we possibly can. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll do the same with the green. These two are from different ranges, but I think they will look really nice together. For my girls in Quilter's Life, a bit of deja vu here. We are not making lanterns, we are making pin tucks, but it feels the same at this moment. So with these, to create this two-sided tuck, you're actually going to put these two right sides together and you're going to sew them with a three-quarter inch Seam. So, because they're one and a half wide, what that actually means, so I mark them with a with a dark pen that I usually wouldn't, but so that you can see. You're going to sew them with a three quarter inch seam, depending on the foot plate on your machine. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a hand sewing exercise, okay? If your foot plate's really well marked. Who's here? Jude's here. <laughs> yes, Diana, that is your fabric. I know, now it's here, I can get it to you. We've brought it Japan to Australia and now it's going to go to Costa Rica. Who's here that's got a... Louise is here. Louise, on your machine, you have got a really good three-quarter inch mark, okay? And depending on you, if you have a banana or something else, I think a Janoni does too. If you've got it, then you'll be fine and you can use your foot plate. If not, five second job to draw yourself a line right down the middle. Then you're going to sew these together all the way down. Here is the one we prepared earlier. So if you can imagine, I'm sure you don't have to imagine much, that becomes this. And we've got one great big long piece like this with a seam down the middle. Then what you do is press these two seams open 
like that. That's one step. Let me grab the ironing board. So I always give these a really good press this way first. We're doing these all in one fabric, but if you download the digital pattern yourself to use your scraps, of course, all the pin tucks don't have to be the same. And, and that, you know, that kind of happens sometimes if you're using um, three or four different fabrics uh, and you're trimming down the blocks to the same amount or you've cut a long strip and you've got this much left across the width of all of the strips of fabric from when you've cross cut squares or something else out of it. You can use all of those at this point. And the size that we're doing, we're at four and a half. We're at four and a half. What's wrong? Nothing. We're at four and a half. <laughs> well, you're not anyway. telling them what. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're at four and a half. But, yes, you're absolutely right. But you can do them at any width that you want to. So I wouldn't go any smaller than four and a half. No, they're no, swearing. The, it's the twisting, it gets too tight. Yes, because there's not enough to accommodate the yeah. up and over. So, and um, we will... Did you make another one? No, this is... Oh, you I'm just ironed it flat again. It's <laughs> smart. Just it. um, and we will come back, quite a few people in the bus to do the Christmas tree. You had that on special last week. I did. I saw that. I did the last kit on special last week. I do want to do it again, um, but I've been waiting on fabric. I haven't had, oh, I know what will work. Well, you could make a no, delicious black and it. gold one with all those fabrics you had on the table before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, um, some of my girls have got this. <laughs> um, have got this in their Madam Butterfly <laughs> kits. But I've got this in black and sage. Maybe, maybe we go a little bit non-traditional this time of year for Christmas in July. I don't know. We'll work on it. But we no, will do it. But there are girls that, that theme their I, whole Christmas. You don't have to be red and green. No, no, no. I have a different idea for pin tucks. I'll tell you later. Okay. Okay. So you flatten them out. So you go from this and then you'll flatten out both sides and then you fold in half. So they are thick. Uh, they're four thicknesses thick. And I can actually say that before the afternoon coffee, which is quite surprising. <laughs> Tongue twisted. So that is what your two-sided pin tuck looks like. I've got a really good idea, Em. I've got a good idea. I'll share later. Share later. Because it is experimental and it may actually not work, so I'm not going to embarrass myself now. Oh, that was like we were discussing with our thing that we're going to bake. On, on, on <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bake on we Christmas. love a good experiment. We love a good experiment. So once you have sewn your whole long strip, it gets cut down to the required to length. the required length or width or whatever. However, you're using it. Did I see in that quilt this morning? You showed me that you had smocking panels in it. Yes. You should show the girls today. You should show them. All right, so we've got a whole heap of these all done, ready. And then from there, we turn them into a long strip that's been foundation pieced. So that's where I can do the bit that says, do you really need four layers? Yes, I only do. Um... I tried it without the four layers, just having the quarter inch seam allowance underneath, and it and when they twisted, they were, had uneven thicknesses, so it didn't sit nice. You really want, you do really want it. And even if you just folded a piece of fabric in half, you'd still want to put an interfacing or something in between. It needs a, it needs good body to it for it to work. So once I went through all of that, I went, it just needs to be four thicknesses. Try it. For goodness sake, try it. Please do. If you had a cotton drill or something, I suppose you could get away with it. Um, but it makes so, it even too. You don't have yeah, a that's bulky right, bit of seam That's layers. right. It's, it's not. I don't like this new mousse, Emma. It makes it look like I've just got out of bed. I'm going to throw it in the bin and get another one. I'm not foofy enough. You want more foofy. Yes, and you can see I need a, desperately need a tint. But, you know, I have a hairdresser with a life that's gone to set up her salon at Mount... She's at 
thread bow or and ball the, ball. the boys have left as well i know i know just Hello. can't get a good hairdresser these days all right what happens from here to get to this spot and when you do get a little kit you'll go that looks so fun what's that for uh it's your foundation piece and it's listed on the outside of the pattern as and well. And you can't see it after. No, it's not there. Up. So if you're doing your own, you can use pretty much anything. Except black. Oh, yeah, don't use black. No. no. When you're using black for your yeah, background. that's right. We you discovered that the hard way. You're going to pop a piece down first. And then you're going to pop a tuck, a tuck on and line up all of your raw edges. And then you pop another piece on top to start then this gets sewn on so when you do this walking foot mm -hmm. walking dual foot feed. dual feed or dual feed or walking foot very important mm. because we've got one two three four six layers so you've got to have one got to do it can't mm -hmm. not and um, do you are we going to do our one concur for the day would you concur oh, I'm not sure. it's not worth pinning it's too short no. it's too hard if you are transferring to an ironing board and uh, and or a sewing machine like I am now, just a just a peg to hold it there. Yes, as you hand it to me to do the here's one. Oh, goody area. goody! How many are you doing? Uh, if you're good, I'll put two on. Thanks. And are they all in the same direction? Yeah, you go in the same direction. Okay. All in the same direction. And and there's the lining. If you'd like to, you know, pin the the top and bottom on of that. Or what do lining. Can you can you pin the? You piece? want this one? Oh, I'm going to do the twist. Can you pin the twist? I'll do that next time. No. Magic. Okay. Little secret. I haven't cut my hair for two and a half years. It is long. I have noticed that it is long, Diana. Um, now, did I miss anything else back here? I just want to check. Oh, hello, James. How are you today? I hope you are well. Hello, Lisa and Emma. Okay, we've got all of that. All right, so we're good. So once you've got all your pin tucks on now, Emma and I have just talked about the fact we do run them all in the same direction, so it's very, it's actually hard to tell when looking at this one that they are, but all of the floral started out on the, on one side or on the top when it's pressed back. It's just how we twist it that makes it look different. So with this one, it's a little bit different because I've cut all of these from this amazing fabric here. So if you do decide to wait and grab one of these ones, when you cut your one and a half inch strips, it's going to get cut down into all these different colour combos as you go. We kind of tried to keep them in an order. I'm not sure it actually makes any difference whatsoever. And I have used the same fabric on both sides so that when you, when we get to twist, this is going to happen and we're going to get quite an amazing looking effect. We did do one of these previously with a with an ombre from Dark to Light and those ombres Dark to Light are going to look fantastic as well. If you grab an ombre to match up with a fabric that you've got from our website that does come at in half metre increments um, and that actually is a really cool amount to get because checking for you based on the height of your bag you will get your lining pieces out for your front and back panels and you'll still have enough for you to do your pin tuck so you get a really nice combo use it for the pin tucks and then use it for your lining front and back if they buy half a meter of ombre to do their own thing Ooh, that'll work too all right thanks then so well that was quick em i was moving on to the next thing okay so there we have Foundation pieced on, fold back, and you can see that's fold starting back to come and back. iron, not mm. finger press. Mm -mm. It's iron, burning fingers, spray bottle, starch all the way. Did you want more of this? I was just about to ask if you'd like to give me those tucks while you pin that. I'll see what I can make happen. Thanks. Okay. So with this now, we want to play. Now we've got a couple of different options. The one that's in the pattern is to actually bring together at the top every second one you'll fold it over so these guys come together and meet up so we go this way and pegs look wonder clips are great for this purpose
Okay. Oh, look at this. This is just, this is going to be fantastic. Look, this fabric that we're using is great, but, you know, I could go looking for fabrics on our website and find, or out there in the cutting room, I should say, and find a heap that will work with different fabrics. Um, we, we've got in a beautiful maple leaf as well. It came in a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just waiting to really make it star because our next Oriental Baltimore black block that we are doing as part of the Quilters Life membership is the maple leaf. So I figured that was a really good time to bring it out and maybe use it as a border around a cushion for me. So there you go. That's the top line done. So you would, you probably sew that first, but because M's still busy over there. Now when we go to the other side, we're going to alternate. So instead of, we'll leave one here. In fact, I'm going to pin him back because he really will go back that way. And then we bring these two together. So that's the opposite to what's on the other side. There we go. So now these two go together. And then you can start to see the effect. So this is what's in the pattern. The other alternative is just to pin, leave all of them down on one side and pin them in the opposite direction on the other side. And that's going to give you the same effect as what we do on the pin tuck patchwork bag. So we'll just pop these together. It's so funny. Emma and I were going to make biscuits this morning. <laughs> I'm laughing now. But we have been uh, looking at new recipes for our soiree. So if you haven't signed, if you do want to still come to our Megambi soiree, we've got a few spots left. Um, I think on the sun, there's only a few, a few on the Saturday and some on the Sunday. I know it's a bit of a hype, but some of you might like to come. We're actually advertising what's left up there in the local paper this week, so we want to get in before we do that. I think it's going in, is it what's on? Or, I don't know, can't remember now. There we go. How's that? Oh, ooh, it's fun. So this bag, we were talking about this fabric and, you know, if you really, really wanted a sewing bag and you really wanted everyone to know that you were a stitcher, this is the bag to make with these fabric because it's going to be bright and it's got all the cotton reels on it. There we go. And then that one will stay back that way because he's going the other direction. Look at that. Love it. Love it, love it. So M will sew this one. And then just like the uh, one's a fussy cut from Melba. So, yeah, so what you need to understand, of course, I'm sure you've worked it out, is that the dimensions of this bag, the top and the bottom, were all based around uh, the Melba divisions. And I think I will cut one for you today just so you can see how it all works. But that's going to go together like that. <laughs> all right, now, um, and this is the back panel. Now, there's a lot of, on these bags with the black, there's a lot of space up here. I expect that you'll come through and add your own embellishment over here. Um, you could put in extra piecing in here with the bits that you've got left from these. I actually love the idea of just getting a strip of what's left of this pin tuck fabric and just running it right through the middle across here if you want to break that up. But it's entirely up to you what you want to do there. I'm leaving mine plain for now because that's sort of the side that's going to sit against my body anyway. So that's it. And then for the lining, M has sewn this one up ready. So this is a uh, what we call a wraparound base and sides, if you've got my little design book. So the panels come up and around onto a centre side seam. And this is our lining. So it's a really nice wide base to the bag. And as you can see, this is what the lining's going to look like. We cut the bases uh, from our background fabric for the pin tucks um, and for the back panel. 
so you're going to get that really nice striking black in the middle but also that's really good and practical because it's not going to show the dirt and um, you've got two pockets well three actually four whatever you want to do M's put me in two bits here to pop my little rulers in and my pens in and then I've got two big ones in here for a notebook and my phone on the inside so so that's for that one how are you going Em? <laughs> come back all right so that's that part of it together and it's really look again you know me with my bags there's just so much room for you to mess around with it and do your own thing so uh, I'm sure I'm sure you'll be fine handles these come out of the leftovers I actually want to cut one out for you as well just to show you the fussy coating what who said like, what do I see some things come up do I... they're all just talking I don't know Let them talk. oh we're talking ponytails okay because when someone's talking about they've got a half pony or a full pony and I thought who chopped their pony in half but no it's, it's when you get that bit and take it to the top they're still talking hair okay oh the girls are here from the UK hello Donna how are you this morning you're up early you're up very early, very early, really early. Hello, Erica. Sue Broadway's here. Yolanda's here. Do you know where Leander is? Cool, cool. Yolanda? I don't know. Where is Yolanda? She's in Holland. Diana's here from Costa Rica. The girls are in from California in New York. I tell you, it's all on. I love it. I love it. Um, and, you know, I'm sure to them places like New America and Yeovil sound really exotic. And they try and like say Shropshire. it like Shropshire, <laughs> infamous coffee, Nescafe. Oh, so sorry. Okay. <gasps> Look I'm what just past halfway. Sorry. We don't want this one anymore. We're finished with that. Well, I'll have this one then. Thanks. All right. Here's one. Emma's working on at the moment. So just to show you, if you just want to go in one direction, like I mentioned, I would pin. this it's not going to matter it really isn't because once you've got this panel ready and you tack them in place you can decide which way up you want it to be so you can see with that I'm going to end up with probably just because of the way it's working probably more of the cream showing than the orange should we flip the other way do the other way go back here just to have a look at it from the other direction we've got more orange so you can have you can have a really good play and if you if you are doing your own from the digital download that's how that's going to look um, with your background fabric do take it take a little maybe a little bit more time than usual to pick that obviously I've gone black because I wanted dramatic contrast to use. The grey one was a little bit harder to try but treat your background not so much as a background with the pin tuck panel more like a third fabric going into a, a trio combination and we are using all the same colour through here but just to mess with your heads a little bit if you were to put one of our ombre let's do this one if you were to put this in as the strips for your background instead of the black and then use black and maybe full-on gold something that's going to contrast full-on gold that um, precious metals we've got for the pin tucks over the top and have this showing through as the background pieces underneath completely different look completely different look an ombre something like that so just keep that in mind because it is a third fabric as opposed to a background I think when you're putting when you're putting all your colors together now just before we do this cut that I want to show you we did have speaking of autumn we had some other beautiful things come in this week I have not tagged them but if you put the word flannel in oh, what's in here ah oh, and I found the Christmas stamps yeah are my rubber Christmas stamps I found them they're in the bento box it's really good because I couldn't find them for the last two years. Um, 
and a flannel. Look at this. Look, 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 look. This came in last week and we were just too busy to... I'm really excited I found my Christmas stamps. There's a good chance that people will get Christmas cards this year now. Look at that. This is flannel. It is beautiful wool flannel from Benetix. Oh, goodness. So, if your couch... Never mind a quilt. If your couch needs a bit of snuggle and some fresh new cushions for winter, then you've got to look at this. Look at that. Let me get... This is a bit of a conflict of colour. Let me get that out of the way. Isn't that just... It's just beautiful. It's rich. Oh, I'm a sucker for a good flannel. And you know, the first flannels that came through years and years and, oh, I, 20 years ago, I made a quilt for mum. And that was back in the day when they really hadn't mastered a, a good quality flannel yet. And um, it didn't, the, the colour just disappeared really quick. It's all different now. Look at that. So, if you love a little bit of patchwork, I've also got this. So this picks up all the colours in here and it's your traditional orange peel. So you can put this on the front and this on the back. Yum. Now if you are also a bit of a wool embroidery girl or you just love the idea of having a bit of contrast, we've also got J, as in J, shadow play J, in black, in wool. So see, so you, I'm glad you can see it today. See how it's got... A little bit of a marble, a black grey marble. So that means it's particularly really good with this. So if you've got that stash of yarn, embroidery threads, pearl threads in these types of colours, I would, I'm not going to say challenge you, I would suggest you get this, you put the tracing paper tracing paper, template plastic, whatever, over the top, trace these off, transfer them onto here with transfer paper or templates or whatever and do yourself a little bit of wool embroidery or hand embroidery. So perhaps make this, I'm just suggesting this because I just don't have time to do it myself this week. So get those two together. If you had a square in the middle of a cushion and you just trace off one of these and just stitch it out on here and then do a big wide border around it and then have something really funky like this on the back or have this on the back again would just the green in here is amazing would just be lovely so I, again I haven't had time I just haven't had time I haven't had a chance to go and have a look with Jennifer at Wonderful Wood Embroidery Threads or anything yet, but I thought I would let you know it's there because you might already have it. And the reason that I thought of it today was because Joe Landa sent me some pictures of this beautiful uh, leaf embroidery that she's doing, and then I went, I've got the fabric. <laughs> I've got the fabric. It's sitting there. I've got to tell the girls about it. So that's that's that one. Now, all right, let's... Let's have a look at these other combinations. And as I said, please don't, please don't panic about ordering a kit or anything. We will get these ones finished and pop them up. Um, it'll only be the Notions one that will be a, a quick thing, and I'll let you know when it's when it's up on the website. What's what 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 what? I did something similar on a pouch, but you're oh oh excellent, Sue. I'm so pleased. Peony gets her hair done every three months or every 12 months, depending on how grey my roots are. You're so funny. <sighs> Margaret Upston got her hair done this week. I said, how's your hair? And she said, blonde. You know what? And to us blondies, that's all that needs to be said. Blonde is, blonde is good. If I ever told you the story about my mother, oh, she watches later on YouTube, I'm going to be dead. When she... Before mum was 40, she said, when I'm 40, I'm going to be naughty. And I didn't know what that meant. All I was focusing on was her surprise birthday party at the time. And she used to have long, brown, permed, coloured hair. It was up to about here and it was all, you know, 70s, all curly and beautiful. 
and on her 40th she went to her hairdresser and came home with a beautiful short short blonde haircut and that is what she has too today and so when she walked into her birthday party that night and went <gasps> everyone else turned around and went <gasps> it was a surprise for everyone so what you can see here is our cut down pieces and elements for the twisted knitting bag so this is the large piece that's for the back panel for the back pocket and these are the two pieces that go uh, either top and bottom of our twisted panel on this grey one we're working with pale pink and ivory so this one's really nice and pretty and soft and it all sits on a really lovely pale grey shadow play any time that you want to know the best you know the best coordinates and, and things to go with our fabrics please email me because and look email's good because you just put down and then it gives me a little bit more time than a phone call sometimes when you ring i'm i know i'm you can hear me i'm going yep okay yep sure sure because there's a truck here there's a delivery guy there's a facebook in progress there's something else happening but if you email me i love it because i'll get in that back room at night time with just me and a bit of music and i can play with colors and you're actually doing me a favor because it's a bit of color therapy for me so anytime you need some advice please don't hesitate to um, email me now you can see I've kind of been matching up colors this is back in you be do dark so this will all work really well with these guys in this middle panel so to get to here oh you've got two of these we use one for the pocket inside and one for outside and then what's left over we actually cut down and we use for the handles so because I cut all of them in one hit yesterday, I was thinking about how do I explain to the girls how to do it really nice and quick without stressing over cutting it, cutting it exactly right and centering it and all of that and I've got it. Now I'm going to cut another one of these because even though we've got it made up, I got someone I've, I've got someone I want to make one for. So I'm seeing Emma's in the other room cutting them all. Do another one. Okay, so I will cut off here um, the the piece that we need. So again, if I was cutting your kit for you, what sort of music? Sally Cox. Good question. Um, Ooh, I don't know if I want to tell you uh, what I listen to. Okay, it's very eclectic. It goes from everything from Sweet Charlotte, ACDC, In Excess, uh, a little bit of Tina Arena. Depends what mood I'm in. It could even be Glenn Miller. So I have, uh, I have two beautiful children. And depending on what they do for me depends on which one uh, I favour on a particular day. And a lot of the time I have to text love notes to my son, Philip, and go, I love you because I love my Spotify account. So I have, Phil's, I have access to Phil's premium Spotify account and he has access to my premium internet. I think that's a pretty good deal. So at the moment, Spotify are running top 100. It's got everything from uh, Sweet Caroline and Dolly Parton here he comes again right down to Hotel California, a whole heap of stuff. So I do have, it's a little bit over that side, but it doesn't matter. I do have, do you, I have design, do you have sewing lists? I have sewing music lists and I have um, a design list that I listen to when I'm designing that's a little bit more chilled. Always, always on design, soundtrack to Men from Snowy River, that's a given, that's always there. Boys. Right, for this bag, this is what you're going to get in your kit. So this is doubled over at the moment, as you can see. This is what you're going to get, and we need to cut. So I fold the other way, and I know that I'm getting it all nicely lined up because that little line of leaves, wattle, and uh, wattle leaves and flowers meet up front and back. So I know that it's straight. So here's the cheat. It's not a cheat, is it? It's a, a really, there we go, this is my pie cutter. 
for your back panels you need to cut these to a certain size um, they are eight so this whole panel here from top to bottom up to about here is about eight and three quarters you are going to cut half an inch above the top of your waratahs okay so half an inch above scoop through there move that along now the next one you are going to cut half an inch above your center flowering gums move that one along then the next one why I never figured this out in <laughs> the first time. It's speed cutting, we're speed cutting. This time you are going to cut half an inch above the top of these little buds. Happy with that? Can we yeah, see? having just made that little medallion quilt the other day. Yeah, I know exactly. You know what, what you're doing? doing? Okay. Half above half an inch above the buds. Move that aside. Then turn them all round. Turn them all round, then you come back again. And you cut five. Oh man, if I have my six and a half inch ruler in my hand, I'll put it down somewhere here. <coughs> I like cutting off my ruler whenever I can. Six and a half and eight. And that, my friends, will give you your cuts really, really quick and easy. Then, to cut them down to the actual width you need, you need to find the centre of all of all of the flowers on each border section. So there, we're going to find the middle of our waratah. like that. Then you're going to find the center of a stirred pea. So this is where we're going to start having little bits left over at the ends and that's super cool. And I've got my board around the wrong way. Hang on, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this. That one there, this one over the top with a stirred pea in the middle. Is that right? Yes, it is. Why am I even? I don't know. And then this one we have flowering gum in the middle, so I can I can fold it right down in the middle of the stem on that one and pop that there. I'll move them up the board a bit so you can see. I know. Lisa Stoke, what are you doing them all in the one? I am, I am. And I don't, I don't want to iron press them because I don't want to put a permanent press in there. And then we cut half the width of the panels because I've got it doubled over like that. And that is then ready to go. Now, the only reason I worked out how to do that is because I did three in a row. I don't know how many of these bags I've made before, but there you go. So there's the three bits done. Really, really quick and easy. So if you just follow that guide, play it back. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on here. Just play that back to yourself. Um, tying up the tomatoes in style later on, do you think? Maybe a little bow on a present. Little bits left over that I can fussy cut and do some English paper piecing or something with the back panel. Now with the other half you actually need two of those big waratah sections because you want one for the lining pocket and one for the uh, one for the outside. So we'll go again. Half an inch above the top of the waratahs. Turn it round. And you can just go through and cut the 8 inch height. We'll do that step again. So we'll find the middle of our waratah. Pop that 
there. And then come down and cut half the width because it's double. And there's another one of those done. Then with the leftover fabric, so I've got my oh, I've got nice little bits there left over to use. With this final bit, we actually cut this down and use it for our handles. So uh, in the instructions, I've given you an actual length, but I would suggest, you know, until you start putting the bag together, um, I would just trim up the ends on this piece and turn it and cut the absolute length that you can do for both pieces. I'm just doing a standard, just one of our standard width, um, you know, handles that's four thicknesses thick. And that means I will cut at four inch, so my straps are one inch wide. And there's no real fussy cutting happening with this bit, except for the fact I will sort of cut from the sections that have got the most colour in them, so I've got a really pretty handle. Okay. Oh, I just made it. I was a bit frivolous there, wasn't I? There you go. So these two pieces will get used for my two handles. So, out of that 60 centimetre cut, this is all I've got left. And everything has been cut down to the exact size that we need. Now, I'm not suggesting that you... This, would be, this is really cute, isn't it? I'll have to work out something to do with that. Um, I'm not suggesting you do it that fast and furious, but I just wanted you to see that it is really easy to cut and I don't want you stressing too much about fussy cutting it down. Just follow those steps of half an inch above the waratah, the flowering gum and the stir pea and then turn them around and cut the actual width that you need and it's really nice and easy. I'm just looking at this quilt here and it needs some work. It's not good. <laughs> I didn't even know if I put it I don't know who put it together or who finished the dimensions off. I don't know it was Lee. It must have been Lee. It's not me. It can't be me because what I just did with you then doesn't work here. So here we have literally nearly chopped off. In some cases we have chopped off the top of our Waratahs. So there will be some... Re Pam, Hello. these Waratahs are chopped off. Hello. There's Waratahs chopped off on this quilt. Yeah, these, we need to rejig this. Oh, they got chopped. It's right on the edge. Someone's ringing to complain about that right now. <laughs> so I will, I'll just rejig this a bit and make sure they all fit. But can you see, do you think? I think this is a, I think this is going to happen. Yeah. That's going to work there. And we'll be able to, we've got pink and we've got teal to work in here. I actually think we'll put the teal here. Oh, we need to choose this. What are we going to put here? Oh, no, I do know. We're going to use W2 Shadow Play, which we used in Winter Blooms in the in the, in the Nine Patch Fragmented Snowballed Blocks because it's that lovely off-white marble. So we'll go really fresh in here, super fresh um, in between. And then these can be black. And we've got... Melba fans, Melba floral uh, in grey. We've got that beautiful precious metals in the silver. We've got pink fans. Uh, we've got pink fans. We've got teal fans. Um, all of the florals are all back in. So we can really, really have some fun with it. And at the same time, Emma and I will start work next week um, on a new version. On a new version of, you know, Melba Melba and Matilda's medallion all in one. Do you want to just see these other ones? I'll just quickly show these ones before we go. So that, that's all part of the grey. Em, is there anything else you want to show the girls before we go? I'm trying. Can you, can you, can you hang for just a minute? Just a minute? You're too busy answering the phone. Let me just get rid of these. Oh, here you go. When you get your new fabric, 
keep that because this has all the colors that are in your Melba print. So when you get this new one, um, you'll see the only difference between this and the gray selvage is here we've taken the two gray ground colors out. It's actually not called background. It's called ground. Don't mess with the agent and the design department. This is ground. Background, never mind. Background is the colors you put in at the back of them. Never mind. It, it's, don't worry about it. It's, I still really haven't got it. But the two grays are missing and you've got solid double black in there. But keep that because that's going to help you go through your stash. Particularly the less obvious colors like this really dark burgundy. And then you've got one, two, three other shades of pink. You've got apple greens, blue greens, teal, jade. So this is really good to have. And I might even look at that as I think about what we are going to use for that sashing. We may actually go to a really, really, I'm looking at it, a really pale apple green might make it nice and fresh. So we'll, we shall see. Right, the other color combos, just quickly before we go, and up in here, em, em really wants to show you that panel finished. Um, so this is the black and orange. So last time when we did Melba Twister Knitting Bags originally, we had the grey that I've shown you, but we also did it on the cream with a green. And I think part of my decision, and I hope the girls in the UK will not be offended, but I was heading off to do Birmingham Festival of Quilts, and I just had this feeling, I didn't know, I was not confident that my new-to-be English customers would love all of the black. So I actually used the cream version background version of this and we had a soft green in behind the pin tops. Well, wasn't I wrong? They loved it because they hadn't seen really anything and you know my line about Melba, it's if Dame Nellie Melba and William Morris had spent a night in the House of Liberty, Melba, this fabric would be their love child. Um, and that was right, but they loved it on the black. So. So same thing, all cut down, same measurements, the whole lot. But this is the other colourway. And this is the part that Emma had started sewing before to show us. So you can see you're going to get these lovely pops of the cream and orange floral with the, with the multi orange. I chose the multi with the little leaves in it to pick up the green that's in these. Because I think the green really pops on this one. So that's going to go in there. That will be the handles. And I just couldn't wait to do this, so we finally got to put in uh, Hampton Stripe in this rich cream with the rust that's exactly the same as the Sturt Peas and the olive green. So this fabric has two different greens in it. It goes into this olivey green here, as well as having this little blue green and the teal. So there's a lot of, a lot of green going on. So that's in that one. Nice pop of contrast um, for the lining. So, Emmy, <laughs> she's still going. Emmy, we have to say bye. What are you doing? She's not coming back. She's not coming back. I know, but we have to go. We've got stuff to do. I've got to start finishing off the mail order before Australia Post come. What's she got? I've got a no. almost bag. Have you? Just mine. There's a couple of pins in the top. Are you actually going to say hello today? Why don't you show the girls? I have the girls something to show. I have something else I want to show the girls. Oh, it hasn't been ironed, so they'll just have to excuse I'll the lack of ironing. It's almost there. And it'll probably send you into psychedelic apoplexy if I keep spinning it around like this with the colours flashing past your eyes. But it is, it's not finished finish as you can see. It is to a stage where you can see <laughs> where you can see what it's going to look like. I think that's just delicious. And you already saw that the lining had been up made up because Lisa showed it to you before I heard her showing to showing it to you. I don't know what she's going to get right now, but we can't both be off off camera and answering the phone. So Whoever's ringing now, hello, and we'll get back to you shortly. Um, I just promised the girls. 
that I would show them one of my chooks. One of the ladies. This is this is Penny. Hello, Penny. Isn't you're she the, beautiful? You're the beautifulest. She you? is. Oh, 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 sorry. No, 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 I gotta go. I gotta go. Sorry. There's only so long that the cuddles last with the chookies. So that's that's how delicious that bag looks, or will look. The handles are just pinned on at the minute. When it's all done, Lisa is coming back, but she asked me. I brought some show and tell in this morning because I'm on school holidays, like some of you people who are so kind as to be looking after children. And I brought some show and tell in. For, I have shown the girls. Wow, flash is that? For Lisa, because this is an old quilt. Yeah. That I, it's got lots of bazillions of bits of embroidery on it, but it's meant to have these bits here. You might need an overhead. Are meant to actually be gathered and, and representing cockades. I'll have to get it just right. Oh, look at that. But it was all boofy, and I didn't like it, so I chose to smock it. So I've got all my pleats. Do you in. know, Em, that would have looked really good in a twisted <laughs> back panel. I could do that. We have the power. <laughs> It's yeah. beautiful. What about the other one? Oh, yeah, I can do the other one. Do the other one. Okay, trade places. Trade place. So I had to bring in Penny for Megan. Oh, the Lancaster? I may get one less chook now. Uh, sorry, one less egg well, today. Did you disturb her on the neck? No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't disturb her. So bye, Penny. Me, no, no. What's the black kit called? Which one? The black kit will the be called one. Australis. Uh, I will get some photos at least of the combos up this afternoon for you. So the black bag is it's actually called Australis on there. Um, there's only three listed uh, in Melbourne. So there's a black pink and there's a nouveau in the grey and it's got its photo and there's a black one. This quilt here on the back wall it does not have a name yet. It doesn't exist yet. It is a concept that we did last year for machine embroidery but we're now going to take that and we are going to redo it because it only uses the border print for all these and one that's what I love about it too it's literally too so I yeah so I really love this end because the girls can decide I'm going to do the pink and black here and I can go gray pink teal teal or they can use one of the florals so mm -hmm. it's really really simple one two three four four fabrics um, and I think if we if we put enough of the border print in we'll have I've got we've got the pattern drafted we'll put enough of this in then all what's left we can fussy cut for English paper piecing in here mm -hmm. you know some of our lattice work and we might even do some penta little pentagons hexagons mm -hmm. I really like the idea of doing it as an EPP it can be anything what's this one? Oh, this sorry um, this is where's the dress? Who's got the dress? Oh, is that with you or me? I don't know. I don't know. We had a dress in this. So Emma it took Sarah. It was Sarah's dress. She it was it. Sarah's. Um, Emma used her leftovers. Literally lastly. leftovers. Literally. Because. But how pretty is it? The big waratah sits down here. That's border stripe. The ah. big one, and that's all I had left because I'd already used the waratah. So that is the leftovers of. It's of actually that bit there. That bit there. It just sits down. Why, long. why, why have we never thought about cutting this in as a triangle? I have, I have done that. On the one that I used that, that left these over. Why, but why, it away. why? So, you so we could do it. big cut off corners or... You have to be careful because that, that's now bias. Yeah, but we can use our quilters tape. We can. And these I had, because I only had so much of the border stripe, I, I think I had this much. You know, I know where you can get some more. Yes, but this was this was going to be a I am not buying fabric quilt. Okay. So these were governed by I, I had this much I divided it into four. Same with this little print here. And I had <laughs> not enough, so I made border cornerstones and these little guys here are actually fussy cut from here on point. So they had bias and they had to be sashed to come up to the right. This size. is what happens when you give someone that works in a school school holidays. It's good. <laughs> Now this, unfortunately, this was we decided this was slipper. Slipper, the pale pink. And that was uh, Robert Cobb. But we've now got Northcote Shimmer. 
Oh yeah. Oh, don't lose that. We'll don't do that to make another bag. So Northcote Shimmer, which is the pale pink that we're putting into um, into the, the grey one. Yep. It, that was fine. Enough. Yep. Absolutely fine. And that was That's I only so used that because that was what I had. Yes, but I think. See, this is. I was telling the girls we're going to do a, 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 a fusion of uh, Matilda's medallion. A Melba, a Melba medallion. A Melba medallion. Natasha will die seeing the other ones just found its way to her, thank goodness. Did I tell you, it was missing for ages. And the Japanese Baltimore. Oh. oh I actually wasn't stressed because. Too much. <laughs> because I knew Natasha would sort it. I knew she would. She would literally she break into no a British Post distribution centre if needed with the girls and get in those big trolleys and hunt <laughs> if needed to find it. I just knew she would find it. Um, Fiona, that is absolutely fine. I would love you to do that. Throw me an email. Just do an email to me. Don't put it on here because I can lose stuff. Uh, just drop me an email. Um, that's absolutely fine. We will get that organised for you. Joan says, they are lovely, Emma. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Melanie's asked the $64 million question. What does Ginny think about the chooks? Ah, uh, she's still here. She likes so, watching Chookavision through the windows. Chookavision uh, at Cluckingham Palace is a new thing, and uh, it comes in many forms. She will sit at the window and go, meow, 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 and talk to them through the window. She will play. She did run across the sewing table. I am table. queen of the chookery and sit on top of the chicken coop and just talk to them from there. I couldn't find her yesterday, and I was at the back and I went, "Ginny," and I hear this bell ring, and she comes down the ramp in the chicken coop, stretching. She's been asleep in mm. the chicken coop while the girls are out. I don't really know yet that there as is long a chook. It there's does a chook, not end up as a catastrophe. A catastrophe. There's a chook standoff at the moment. But I'm told that all chooks and cats do eventually get along because the cat works out the chooks are too big to eat and the chooks pet the cat and everyone just becomes friends, I'm told. <laughs> I'm told. Uh, oh, Adana says she's waiting for my email. Okay. That's all about sending fabric to Costa Rica. Oh, nice. Uh, Dana, I actually have put in a query with Australia Post about the best way to get, and with my freight courier to find out, because we all, all of us here, everyone at Chandler's Cottage and friends all want to know that Dana has Melbourne fabric in Costa Rica, don't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, we will get that. Amiga's just gone, oh, my God, I'm assuming that's when I bought the chook in. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, Glennis and Pam. And... Um, <laughs> How do you say, I can never, I'm always worried, is that, oh, Naja, 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 no, I'm never going to get it right. Please, please send your name with a, a, a um, sounds like, rhymes with. I want it to sound nice. Catherine mm -hmm. says, our farm cats never attack the chooks. There you go. I, I just think they're too big, but they are chilled out, chilled out breed, so they're really good. Highline brands, they're really nice. Okay. That's it. Enough chooking around. Ha ha. Ha ha. We're going to go and have a coffee, aren't we? I'm finishing a bag. Don't know about you. So yeah, I'm making coffee. She's finishing bags. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. It was, as usual, for a Tuesday show with Emma. All over the place didn't help that a truck arrived an hour before. Um, we were due, due to go live. I'm now listening to chooks laying eggs out the window. Um, before we were due to go live. So, a little bit chaotic. But you can, you can hear me. I'm so excited and horrified that I have all this new fabric here to upload onto a textile pantry, onto Chandler's Cottage, and get it all organised for you and me and kits and all that stuff. And I'm going out to work on my geisha kits now and my applique sampler borders is what I'm doing for the rest of the day. Um, based on the show that we did on Saturday, I'm, sorry, I'm also very relieved that this mess in here, which I don't wear a brace for when I'm talking to you, but this mess in here is going to be alleviated a lot by doing monopoly applique. So if you missed our last live show, please do have a look. It's on YouTube now on the Lisa Chandler channel as well. Um, and I think that's all. Sorry, I can hear chooks outside now pecking on the window wanting to come in. It was my fault. They now think they can come in the house because I brought one in. Um, with applique sampler, 
and sorry with the applique sample I have new posts up on a quilter slide for you if you still want to get in to do the Oriental Baltimore you've only got a few more days before you will miss the first month's instalment so if you want to get in and join up really quick you need to get on there we have started Madam Butterfly we are well into it now the girls have got three or four demos in the patterns for month one and you can still join that till the end of the month but the Oriental Baltimore you need to be in by the 14th so you don't miss out on the first instalment of that one. It's all part of your $10 a month membership. That is my so embarrassingly very telly selly voice. That's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. Please enjoy the rest of your week. If we get a chance to pop back in later in the week, depending on what's new and what's happening, I will... But I'm not, I haven't, I'm not ignoring you. I haven't forgotten you. We've just got lots of kits to get out. We've still got end of financial year. Can you hear that? That's actually Chooks throwing sticks and bark and stuff up against my window. And they are somewhere they are not supposed to be. So I'm going to go and sort that out. Um, but yes, I, we will get through everything. And if you are in a quilter's life, you'll know how much work I'm doing at the moment. I'm kind of making three Madam Butterflies at once and I want to keep that up as long as I can. So I will be back in touch later in the week and again I will post up a picture of the um, Notions multicoloured pin tuck bag as soon as it's ready so you know when it's online. That is enough dribble from me. Love you all heaps. Have, have a great week won't you and um, if you get any questions coming to your head late tonight, overnight, you know the drill, just pop them in an email to info at Chandler's College and I shall reply in the morning. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.